Okay, let's talk about the new Motion 4 <clears throat> Depth of Field. Now, this is a really, really awesome feature that is just super fast and just, oh man, it's just one of them things that, like Snow Leopard, this new update, the Final Cut, has really improved workflow instead of adding a bunch of flashy new features. Because, I mean, how many new features can you add before it just gets bloated? You really need to concentrate on stability and workflow, and that's what they've done. And um, we're here to talk about the depth of field. Now, the first thing we need to do is explain my setup. As you can see, I have three pictures in my scene inside of a group. This one, this one, and this one. And a simple camera. Nothing big deal, no big deal, a simple setup. If I go to my top view, it makes it real easy for you to see what's going on. Here's my camera, right here. Here's my, here's one picture, right here. Here's another picture right here, and here's another third picture right here. As you can see, they're all spaced out over this 3D space here. And after you know, you can do that when you add a camera. When you add your camera, you get your 3D space. But I'm assuming everybody who's watching this video has a little prior knowledge about motion, and I don't have to explain that you have to go up and add a new camera before you can get the 3D space. I'm hoping that you all understand that. We're just here to talk about depth of field. So as you can see, I have a camera added and three pictures laid out in 3D space. So let's go back to our perspective view here. And this is what it looks like in perspective view. And if we're going to look through the camera, this is what we see. So let's go ahead and split our view off. Let's make it split right down the middle like this. This way we can see our top view. I don't need to see much of the top view, just a little bit. Okay. And let me zoom in just a tad. Here. Okay, so now as you can see here, we have our top view here, and we have our camera view right here. So this is a pretty good layout. I can see my camera and my three pictures, and here's my three pictures corresponding with these over here. This one, of course, is this picture. This one, of course, is this picture, and this picture right here, of course, is this picture. So before we can start working on our depth of field, we need to turn on our depth of field option. So we need to go to our render menu, which is new in Motion 4, and go down and select depth of field. And when you do that, if you noticed, automatically those pictures in the back are kind of blurry. So let's select our camera, go to the camera tab, and you'll see a depth of field option. Now under this is where we do our adjustments. Of course, there's a depth of field amount. I can turn it way up, and as you can see, things get real blurry. And I'm going to leave it over-exaggerated a little bit so you guys can see better over YouTube. Okay? So now we have our focus offset, our near focus, our far focus, and our depth can be radial or planar. Okay? And we have a filter which can be Gaussian or defocus. Defocus is a little more accurate but takes a little bit longer to render. So maybe right before export you might want to turn on defocus. So now let's quickly talk about this here. Focus offset. If I adjust my focus offset, if you look in my top view, you can see my camera here. And when I adjust this focus offset, you can see that moves. Okay? Now, a, quick, a good way to, to um, judge this is if you want to say, well, say I want this picture here to be in focus and I want these to be out of focus. I'll take this line right here in the front of my camera and line it up to my picture. Okay? So if I take my focus offset, and you can see that line there moving back, back, back. I'm going to scroll it down to its right even. Rock that right there on that picture. Now, as you can see, that front picture here is in focus. And these back two pictures are out of focus. Well, what if I want to focus in on this one and have the others defocused? Well, let's take our focus offset up. You notice our line right here. I want to make it even with this picture. So let's take it up like so. And we'll make it even there. And now this one's in focus. And these are out of focus. And, you know, accordingly, you can go all the way back to the back if you if, if you so desire. And the back one now is in focus, and these front ones are out of focus. And, of course, as you can see, you can set keyframes and animate this parameter. Okay? So let's go back here a little bit. Let's set it right, right there to our first one is in focus. Actually, let's just reset everything, okay? So now we've talked about our offset focus. We know what our offset focus does. It, it, you just line it up to whichever item in your scene you want to be focused in. So let's talk about near focus. This is a little more complicated to explain because it gives you a vicinity of what 
is going to be in focus. Now, if I <clears throat> that was our focus offset. Now let's adjust our, adjust our near focus. When I adjust my near focus, you can see I get a second line here. Okay? And if I bring this second line here down, and I'm going to make it even with that first picture. As you can see, none of our pictures are in focus because the plane here, the front plane of our camera, is not where it should be. Of course, if I was to move it back here like this using the focus offset like before, it would put it in focus. But I've offset it some up like this, so none of them's in focus. Okay? So now I'm going to go back to near focus. And when, as I said before, when I adjust this near focus, you see this second line here. And if you notice, as this second line gets closer and closer to this picture here, which is this one, the front one, you notice it starts getting more in focus. So as that line gets closer, 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 you can see that front picture there is now coming into focus. Right here. Now it's in focus. Okay? So now the far focus does the same thing as the near focus, only it focuses the front plane here. So let's adjust out our far focus. Now you can see we're getting one come out in the front. Now if I take this and go all the way up and match it to that middle picture, now our middle picture is in focus because our far focus plane is lined up with it. Our front picture is in focus because our far our near focus plane is lined up with it. So this is a way of focusing in on two different images that are separated from one another. As you can see, this image is back here and this image is right here and they're both in focus. Okay, and we've done that by using our near and far focus planes. Whatever is in between these two focus planes is going to be in focus. If I take this far focus plane all the way back out past this last picture, it's going to be in focus. So this near and far focus plane kind of creates a range of stuff to fall into that's going to be in focus. Okay, So as you can see now, between this line and this line here, which is our near focus plane and our far focus plane, anything in between those two near and far focus planes is going to be in focus. As you can see, this one here is in focus and this one here is in focus because it's encompassed by our near and far focus planes. Okay, So that's how you would get two things to focus in at a time. Use the focus offset just to focus in on one thing. Or, as you can see, I'm moving all three together with the focus offset. Okay, So if I want to just focus these two and defocus this one, I'll use my focus offset and dial this up. And now, use my far focus. These back two are in focus, and this one's out of focus. And why is that? Because between our near and far focus plane, anything that's inside that is in focus. Okay? So there's a way of focusing in on just one item or focusing in on several items while leaving other items defocused. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The planar defocus is kind of more... Um, if you can see there's a slight difference, kind of more polygonal of a defocus. That's You can get that under um, filter shapes too. Um, you can get not only disc, but you can get polygon, which makes the defocus a little more square. Okay, And um, this was the basic overview of depth of field. Now, okay, let's reset all this. Instead of having to animate these by hand, if you want to focus in on one thing and then to the next, um, Motion 4 has added a behavior. So if we select our camera and go add behavior, camera, focus, it gives us a focus behavior, okay? And let's make it about this long here. So I'll hit the O key and make the focus behavior about that long. And now as you can see, our focus behavior here, we have a target well. So all we have to do is I want to focus in on this back image first. So I'll drag the image I want focused in on into that well. Now you can see that back image is focused in and it will stay focused on that back image for as long as this behavior bar lasts in the mini timeline. And if I want to go from focusing in on this one to focusing in on, and you can also set your ease in, ease out, how you want it to go. I'm going to say ease both. Okay, so now it's going to ease in and focus in on that back picture. Then it's going to unfocus because we're going to set another focus behavior. So select our camera, add behavior, camera, focus. And we're going to trim the end point to the end of the other focus behavior. 
have it last about, I don't know, that long there. And we'll have this second focus behavior focusing on this first picture right here. Okay, so let's we'll select it. We'll drag our picture into the well. And now that one's focused. And as you can see, it goes to our back picture being focused. Then it'll focus out and focus in on our front picture. Now this one's focused. So as you can see, we're focusing from this back picture to this front picture. And we've done it all with behaviors. And not have to set any keyframes. As you can see, they're going back and forth. Blur, unblur, focus, unfocused. And that's all from two behaviors. So this is a basic brief rundown of depth of field. If you would like me to go over things more in depth, like we'll talk, we can talk about the filter shape to get that active, and we can talk about the sides and stuff. But I think this is enough to get you all going um, in the right direction and let you all play around with it a little bit. So thanks for watching. I hope this has helped, and um, we'll see you in the next video.